Hello! In this video I will show you how to set up and work with the AC ProNav component. So this component is the most important part of this asset pack because it controls any missile that it is attached to. So first off I'm gonna walk you through how you would implement this into your missiles. Maybe you already have a missile, maybe you want to create one first. You can also just use this missile here, but let's say you already have your own missile. In this case, let me create a new blueprint. So what you need to do is your missile should have the AC Pronov component attached to it, as well as a projectile movement component. And let's add a visual indicator so we can see our missile in-game. Okay, that looks good. So in the projectile movement component, what you want to do is here we define the speed of the missile. And if you take this, it looks prettier and we should set the gravity to zero. It does work with gravity, but then we need to give the missile more steering strength. And usually it works better if you set the gravity to zero, at least while the missile is steering itself. Okay, so now that we created a missile, we also need a target. This can be any actor in your game, so I will just create one here. And nothing is required on this actor, we'll just add a visual indicator so we can see it in-game. Good, now we're already done with the setup, we can drag in our target into the game. Now, however you want to spawn your missile, that's up to you. I'm gonna do it in the first person weapon here. Okay, so how do we spawn our missile into the game? It's very simple, you just spawn it, but then you also need to set the target. You have to define what other actor the missile should be chasing. So in my case, I'm gonna get a reference on begin play to the target that I put into the map, but how you get this reference is completely up to you. You're probably gonna do it in a different way. So I'm gonna get my BP underscore target here. And then I'm going to promote this to a variable, which I'm going to call missile target. Okay, and then down here, right now we're spawning the first person projectile, we're going to spawn our BP missile. And then we're going to drag out, we're going to get AC pronf component, and then we're going to type in set target. Okay. Now we're telling the missile it should chase this missile target that we got earlier. That is all we need to do. Now if we go in-game and we spawn a missile, you can see it starts homing in. Of course, collisions are not set up, but that is a basic implementation of Pronav. Now you can go ahead, you can go into your missile, you can start coding things, you can add a hitbox, you can say if it hits something it should explode. But the very simple and basic stuff is already done. Okay, you have your missile set up, it's chasing after the target, but now you want to change the settings. You want to adjust the flight path. How do you do that? So first off, on a projectile movement component, here you change the speed of the missile. Okay, that's done in the projectile movement component. Next, you maybe want to change the steering strength. So the steering strength limits the maximum turn angle of the missile. So the Pronov component always tries to fly the optimal path to intercept the target. But sometimes to hit the target, the missile has to do really sharp turns, which is unnatural and no real missile would be able to do. So by decreasing this value, you can limit the turn angle and the missile is only able to do um, slower turns. So if I put this to 0.1 and we shoot at the target, then as you can see, it's trying to go towards the target, but its turning speed is very limited, so it can't actually hit it. This one could, but if I shoot it more away from the target, it can't anymore. And if I increase this value to a high value, then it can do really sharp turns and it will always hit the target. So next, you want to set the navigation gain or the N value. Okay, f think about this, if your missile comes out of the barrel, it is not on a collision course yet. The way it's going, it's not gonna hit the target. So it has to readjust its course to be on a collision course. Now what is a collision course? If the missile stops steering completely and the target keeps going in 
the same straight line that it's going right now, then it will hit. That is a collision course. If the missile doesn't need to steer anymore to still hit its target. Now the navigation gain defines how quickly the missile tries to establish a collision course. So if the navigation gain is low, then the missile will fly in a curved path up until it hits the target. If the navigation gain is very high, then after it comes out of the barrel, it will immediately do a very sharp turn and then just keep going in a completely straight line. That is the basics of the navigation gain. How do you find the right end value now? If you put this value too low, then your missile will fly a very curved path, which might lead to it taking longer to hit its target. But if you put this value too high, then what might happen is if the target is evading, if it's changing its direction, the missile will react extremely sharp to any evasive action of the target. Instead of getting closer, it will keep changing its direction very rapidly. So if your target is evading a lot and you're using a very high N value, then the missile might not be able to gain distance on the target. It might not be able to get closer because it keeps readjusting its path very sharply. So I recommend stay between three to five. Of course, you can experiment with this, try it out yourself, see what value works best for you. Now that you understand the navigation gain, we can take a look at the pronap method. So, the line of sight setting means that your missile will always go to where the target currently is. For moving or evading targets, this doesn't work well. So if you have moving targets, I recommend using true pronav. This means that your missile will try to establish a collision course and intercept any moving targets. Now if you have targets that are evading very rapidly, so you know that the target is trying to evade the missile and it has strong steering capabilities, then zero effort miss is a good pick. Because this algorithm, unlike true pronav, dynamically changes its navigation gain based on the distance to its target. So the closer it gets to its target, the more aggressively it will steer itself to bring itself onto a collision course. If it's very far away from the target, it will just try to get closer to the target and the closer it gets, the more aggressively it will bring itself onto a collision course. This works, as said, very well against targets that are trying to evade. If the target is not evading, it's not really needed. Although you could, of course, still use it. Next, let's briefly talk about the auto inter velocity setting. So if you enable this and you have a projectile movement component attached, then the PRONAV component will automatically steer the missile. If you disable this, then even if you have a projectile movement component attached, this component will only calculate where the missile should go, but it will not steer the missile. Why would this be useful? So this component works on any tick rate, any frame rate, but you can also just decrease the tick rate down here. This would save some resources, although I don't think it's needed because the component is very resource efficient. But if you're spawning a lot of missile and you're noticing, okay, this is causing some performance issues, you can lower the tick interval, but then your missile would fly in a choppy flight path if the, com if the component that's running on a low tick rate is also steering the missile. So then you can steer the missile on tick on the actor, like right here, and the component only updates every 0.1 seconds. Next is the course correction. So for PRONAV to work, you have to fire the missile into the general direction of the target. If you have a rocket launcher in your hand and the target is on your screen and you shoot, it's probably gonna work. But if you're turned away from the target, you're looking in the completely wrong direction and then you're firing, PRONAV might not be able to work properly. That is completely normal. The initial conditions when you fire the missile have to be correct in order for PRONAV to work. Okay, but now if you're shooting away from the target and you still want PRONAV to work, this is your setting. If you press autocorrect course, then even if it's fired into the completely wrong direction, it will realign itself with the target and then it will enable PRONAV again. If you press none and you fire in the wrong direction, the missile by, might fly a weird flight path. And if you press stop steering, if you fire into a completely wrong direction, it will just go straight because it can't establish tracking. And instead of doing a weird flight path, it will just fly straight then. Real quick, if you're using climb to height or avoid terrain, then I highly recommend you keep autocorrect course enabled. Why is this? Because these two behaviors, which I will explain in just a second, will also steer the missile and they might steer the missile away from the target. 
Now, this can cause the missile to lose its tracking. If you have autocorrect course enabled, it's not a problem, but if you have this disabled, then it might lose its tracking and then it can no longer hit its target. So using any of these two, keep autocorrect course enabled. Now the climb to height setting. If you enable this, then these settings here become relevant. The climb height, if you fire, the missile will climb up 1000 units before homing into the target. The climb speed defines um, how much of its maximum steering strength the missile will use for the climb. So if this is 0.5, then it will use uh, 2.5 steering strength to steer towards the target and 2.5 steering strength to steer upwards. So the homing range. This is so that if your missile is still climbing but it's already getting really close to the target, the missile stops climbing and just starts homing in so it doesn't fly over the target. So once the missile enters the homing range, which is only horizontal, then it will just stop its climb and start homing into its target. Next, destroy and miss. So if, if you enable this, this setting becomes relevant. This setting defines a, um, a sphere around the target. And if the missile is within that sphere and it misses, so it notices that it's going towards the target, going towards the target, and now it's going away from the target again. So it missed the target. If it's within that range, it explodes. Why would you use this? Let's say you're shooting at a plane and you have an explosive and it's just barely missing the plane. Then you still want it to explode because it can still hit the plane. It's within the explosion range, but it's not a direct hit. So that's what you would use this setting for. So the avoid terrain setting, if you enable this, then the terrain scan angle, the scan object channel, the climbing speed and the homing range become relevant. Now, if you enable this, then your missile will fire out a line trace. If the line trace hits anything, the missile will start steering upwards. It will start steering upwards uh, with the strength defined in the climbing speed. So right now it would use half of its total steering capabilities to steer upwards and avoid the obstacle. Next, the line trace will be performed in a downwards angle, which you can define here. The line trace will end 5000 units before the target. So if there is any obstacle within the homing range, that obstacle will not be avoided. And then you can also define on what object channel the line trace is performed right here. Finally, there are the debug settings. If you enable this, then the missile will print all of its stats on the top left of your screen. You can see how fast it's going, how long until it will hit the target, how fast it's closing into the target, all of these stats will be displayed. And then there is the debug trail. If you enable this, then your missile will leave behind a trail. You can define the color here. This might be nice if you're setting up your missile um, and you want to visualize the flight path. Okay, that's all. So just a few things before ending this video. First, keep in mind that you can hover over any of these variables to get an explanation, how to properly use them what the value actually stands for, what units they're in. Um, next, if anything is unclear, do not hesitate to join the Discord and send me a message. I'm happy to help you out. Finally, if you haven't already, check out the demo level. The demo level sh also explains all of these parameters. You can get um, really nice examples. You can look at them and maybe it helps you understand how to work with this component even better. Thank you.